my name is Mike Hurst. I'm senior lecturer in civil engineering here at the uh, University of East London. Um, my role since September has been the mental wealth champion for the engineering and the built environment clusters. Uh, and that was my task really to coordinate how we were going to deliver this uh, for the first time. Essentially the approach was uh, project based learning. Um, this is where the students are given a fairly open ended task uh, and they have to research, they have to understand what the problem is, they've got to define what the problem is, uh, then they have to then test any solutions they come up with and finally present the solution that they had. So the project based learning we felt was the best vehicle to achieve what we wanted to do. The sort of underpinning theory behind that was to let them experience what it's like to deal with change and to manage themselves individually and in groups through this change-like process. Um, I've nicknamed it as managed chaos um, and it seemed to be quite effective. Uh, one of the main aspects of this particular way of learning is to have a sort of resource-rich environment so the students can access a range of possible resources that they can be led to or they can find themselves but essentially they're in the driving seat um, they've got certain outcomes they need to achieve in a certain time span and a certain quality and it's up to them to manage and to organize themselves and their own learning to achieve those particular outcomes I think uh, as engineers and uh, as an in, within an engineering department it's important for students to see mental wealth as uh, a particular topic which is more important than some of the technical subjects and I say that because the ability to manage their own uh, resilience, uh, their own skills, to demonstrate a way through their own learning is key to any successful outcome for them. Great, they get a first class honours degree, brilliant, but they need to be able to develop those softer skills as people skills and we thought this particular method using project based learning was going to be the best way to actually achieve that because it essentially puts them in the driving seat and gives them some control, quite a bit of control over how they arrange themselves and work through that. And through that process to deal with change and ambiguity and do that in a in a sort of systematic processed way that we can support them with as they are experiencing that. I think the main uh, benefits that I've certainly seen is that there's the growth in students confidence. Um, we had one student she was particularly shy, didn't like standing up in front of a group, um, was a little bit reserved uh, and now in term two she's the first one that wants to sort of show what she's learned, what she knows, wants to be up there presenting. So that's just a simple example how people have gone through this program of experiencing uh, learning processes then reflecting on what they've done has, a, has, has helped them to grow in confidence. So that one is a key benefit. I think the other benefit is the way we've structured it in that in the assignment we have two basic areas of assessment that go on. One is uh, what we call a group engineering project and that runs across the whole 12 weeks. The other aspect is that running parallel to that is a reflected diary or log that they do as they're working through that. So even if the engineering design challenge, they're having problems and things are not going quite right in terms of getting hold of resources or timing or their ability to collaborate uh, creatively or to achieve what they need to do, Provided they recognise that and reflect on that in their learning diaries, in their reflected diaries, um, that will help them to um, not only um, boost up their marks because they're actually recognising where they are failing and they're thinking about how they could improve, um, but it's also helping them to understand how they can achieve their particular outcomes. So with this uh, double-threaded assessment going through, um, they're being assessed not only on the product but also on the process and that process is very explicitly linked to the mental wealth criteria so they are being judged on um, how well they have coped with uh, learning uh, digital applications how well they have coped with collaborating as a team 
how well they have coped with dealing with the uh, physical demands that uh, that particular project has had them to do, you know, working late hours or trying to uh, burn the midnight oil, how can they look after themselves when they're going through those sorts of ideas. So that process, um, that two two-stage process about them doing the work and reflecting on their done enables them to um, achieve even if the engineering project doesn't hit their outcomes or completely achieve what they wanted to do so uh, and, and making the students aware of that is very important and, and once they realize that they're actually getting graded and marked on how well they're dealing with change uh, that that really works well um, I, I've got one example I can tell you. One student, um, uh, we, we get them working on Microsoft Teams as a collaborative uh, software that helps them to share files and talk to each other and records that information so they can use it. But Douglas um, messaged me through Teams saying he was a little bit upset that somebody had been thrown into his group in week four, um, a late enroller, and that it was going to be very difficult for the team to... Uh, deal with this and it wasn't fair that they're having to deal with this but when we spoke and I went back to him and I said well actually it's quite a good thing to happen because it gives you something to talk about when you're writing reflective diary you know because yes it is an issue where you've got somebody coming in from outside it happens in real life you've got to make them part of the team you've got to bring them on board as quickly as you can bring them up to speed that's something you need to deal with but also the benefits and this is I think you know, they tend to miss out on that because they're just thinking of the grade, the grade, the grade. The benefits are you've got an extra member of the team. You've got somebody else that can share the load. Um, you've got more ideas, more creativity. And, and, and when he sort of realised that and he realised that how he was dealing with that change was actually going to be considered as part of his grade, um, they went on from strength to strength and actually they won the eventual prize at the end of the term. Um, they, they were one of the highly commended groups. So I think that had a good benefit and you know, he really, I think, responded to that. Uh, generally the feedback has been very good. Um, these were level four students, um, first years, uh, so you know, their experience of UL um, was sort of limited. Some had progressed on from level three. Um, but I think they did see it as something different and something new. It wasn't a normal sort of, oh, we'll just turn up to the lectures every once in a while and crash out the coursework in the last two weeks and hand it in. I think they, they quickly got the fact that you know, it was what they were doing and how they were thinking and how they were doing it, which was going to get them through the module and, and help them achieve. And that's been the very positive thing that's been coming through, that they have realised that by reflecting on what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they're uh, adapting to change and managing change explicitly in terms of the mental wealth competencies has really helped them to focus and improve those particular skills. As I mentioned previously, uh, the, the young lady, you know, she has grown in confidence and ability and now I can see that in her work and in, in, in what she's doing this, this particular term. So I think that, that's a positive thing. I remember um, I saw a video that one of the um, communications team took randomly asking students about what they thought about mental wealth uh, from students just coming out of the library and one of my students, I recognised him, uh, said uh, yeah, yeah, this is what mental wealth is about, it's about doing your best and it's about working with people and it's about getting on with people and that really sort of, I hadn't thought about it but yeah, that's what we're really doing, we're helping these people manage themselves and work with others to to achieve a positive outcome so uh, yeah there's lots of anecdotal evidence for, for, for that particular area of work so yeah I'm very pleased with the feedback that we've had. Uh, my experience of teaching mental wealth in a way uh, you know, I have been teaching quite a while um, and you know, a lot of the techniques that we use in teaching um, sort of go under the radar, you know, how we want people to act, uh, we want people to work in teams, so in a way, you know, we have been delivering this sort of material in this sort of way, but it's only now with the emphasis on mental wealth and, uh, and the competencies that, it's, it, that we can be explicit and that we can really demonstrate that they are important and they are one of the key things that we are looking to them to develop, so I think Historically, uh, we have done this past, but this has allowed us to bring it to the forefront 
uh, and make it a, a key learning point of all the mental wealth modules, whether they're level three right the way to level seven. Um, I think what also has been a very positive thing for me is that with this particular group we had about 120, 130 students, so that meant we needed to have about five or six other tutors coming in to deliver the tutorial sessions and workshop sessions. Um, you know, similar um, members of staff like myself that hadn't taught mental wealth before, but it enabled us to start collaborating as a team and developing materials and reviewing what we were doing. So we were actually using it in a way as a vehicle to develop our collaborative skills as part of it. And that was very refreshing. You know, getting academics to collaborate uh, with positive outcomes is always a tricky thing to do. And I think getting the team together to do this has really helped us achieve that uh, particular outcome. So that's a positive thing that I, I would take forward from this. Yeah, be ambitious. Um, I think we we don't give students enough credit when they come into us. They've got ideas, they've got thoughts. If you can find a project-based learning activity with an external uh, outcome, we had fortunate links with a charity called Engineers Without Borders that it was linked to a real project in uh, Johannesburg um, and there was lots of material that we could link with real people in terms of what they needed in that area. Um, and that really inspired the uh, student to sort of get involved and to find uh, uh, a solution to the problems that these people were facing. Um, and it was just a fairly open-ended one. So I think to make it successful, then you do need to find an external project with external links that make it a real live project. And so far, through the levels that we're looking at, um, at level three we're doing at the moment and at level seven, we're running similar sort of external links and external projects working with local employers um, and, and other local agencies as well. So I think that's a key thing. It's about having external links, though the project is real. It's not a sort of scenario. It's not a thing we've generated out of thin air, but it has got real people that are looking for real outcomes. Um, and, and you've got so many benefits with, from that. You know, we had external uh, visitors coming in and assessing the presentations. We had peer group uh, students assessing their own uh, work, um, and then we had a final judging session, a poster session, where uh, you know it was just electric. You know, the students were really buzzing. Uh, they were grabbing in all their other lecturers to uh, see, to show, showcase what they'd done. And for first year students, level four students, I don't think anybody would sort of believe that level four students would be up to that level of sort of interest and enthusiasm and uh, you know presentation delivery so I think that that's my advice to, to anybody who wants to get involved in mental wealth get yourself a good project external links and be ambitious you know get people involved get externals involved set them up challenge the students and, and more often than not they will rise to that challenge <laughs>